You're listening to the Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, a podcast of curated conversations with C-suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development. Get ready for inspiring interviews, educational lessons, and thought-provoking discussions that will challenge you to execute something new and innovative that will drive results in your organization. And now, here's Dr. Tanya Lowe. Hello. You're listening to episode 44 of the Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, using my results driven philosophy of strategy, leadership, teams, and customer experiences. I help organizations develop their best kept secret, their human capital. This podcast is designed to expand the conversation with C-suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development and what it really takes to create develop, and maintain results-driven and high-performing organizations. Our guest today is Dr. Roshana johnson Verwain, the visionary CEO and clinical psychologist at Standard of Care Psychological Services. She is affectionately known as Dr. RJ. With a unique fusion of clinical insight and corporate strategy, Dr. RJ stands as a beacon of transformation for high performers specializing in supporting people of color and first-generation executives on their journey to conquer stress, anxiety, and burnout. Dr. RJ is not just a therapist, she is a pioneering force in the realm of corporate burnout strategy and clinical psychology. With a career marked by a dedication to redefining success, she has become a trusted guide for those navigating the challenging landscapes of high-performance environments. At the helm of Standard of Care Psychological Services, Dr. RJ leads a team committed to setting a new standard for mental health in corporate settings. Her leadership fosters an environment where individuals can find the support they need to achieve their goals without sacrificing their well-being. Dr. RJ has made expert appearances on TV One's For My Man and Oxygen's Snapped. Maybe you've seen her there. She's also a best-selling author of the book, Executive Burnout, Seven Reasons for Why, Seven Reasons Why High Performers Crash and Burn Before reaching their full potential. And none of us want that. In this transformative work, she unveils the hidden challenges faced by high achievers and provides practical insights to break free from the cycle of burnout. Dr. RJ, welcome to RDO. Oh my goodness, Dr. Lowe, I feel like I can take over the world after that introduction. Oh my goodness, woo cha! Thank you. (laughs) I'm so excited that we get to play together today. I am so excited to share you with our community. And I'm so excited to end this season with a topic that I I don't think we really talk about when it comes to to leadership. And that is how do I how do I manage and deal with stress and anxiety and the holidays as just an individual everyday person, but then as um, as a leader and how do I do that, you know, with my team? So I am so excited to have this conversation with you. And I'm just gonna jump right in. Is that okay? Yes, let's go. Let's go. So here we are. We're we're in the holiday season. Um, can you shed some light on why the holiday season tends to be a stressful time for individuals, and and what are some triggers that that makes those things come up right during this period of time? So I'll start with this. I absolutely love the holidays. I'm that person who's like, can I put up my Christmas tree right now? Like, oh, you're the one that puts it up at Halloween, Halloween right? <laughs> well, I want to. However, the rule version of me won't allow it. Okay. But I want to, like deep down in my heart. So I'll say I love the holidays, but I haven't always loved the holidays. So mm-hmm. as a wife and a mom of two kids, um, as an executive, as a sister and a friend and all of that, the holidays used to be extremely stressful. So one of the reasons that 
we tend to get stressed is because of expectations from others Mm. and unrealistic expectations of ourselves. That's the main thing that gets us out of whack for the holidays. Mm. Yeah, that'll do it. That will do it when you're carrying those expectations of, I should be, um, yes. <laughs> I should be, if it starts with, I should just stop and start breathing right then and there. Right. right. <laughs> so a- as a leader, how can individuals manage their own stress and anxiety during the holidays? Are there specific coping strategies or mindfulness techniques that you would recommend for maintaining our mental well-being during this time? Absolutely. So stress is an inside job. You know, we mm-hmm. like to think about stress as something happening to us from the external environment, but it's an inside job and we can control how stressors then impact us. Now I'll say this, your, your listeners, your community may or may not know this. Um, but obviously you were one of my first mentors, coaches, um, leaders, and I am, um, wired to be anxious. And I, and you probably remember this maybe like 14, 15 years ago, I was like scared to do anything. And you like, just do it like girl, like do it scared. And I have taken that, do it scared. And I've gone like to the moon with it. And now I'm able to share it with my clients as well. I'm saying all that to say that level of anxiety was an inside job. Mm -hmm. And often all we need is permission from someone we look up to, from another expert, from a friend, from a trusted family member or coworker, we need permission to let go of expectations. Mm -hmm. So some of the coping skills that we can use first would be, I would say just to journal, spend some time writing down what the expectation, what would make today great, basically. Mm -hmm. Just a quick, what would make today great and do that day by day during the holiday season five minutes i don't even mean like a whole dissertation like we're all busy we have things to do every day when you wake up starting november 1st and then for those who celebrate um, a myriad of holidays starting whenever your holiday season begins every single morning for five minutes or a little less write down what will make today great the reason that's important is we can get swayed by Um, others' expectations. We can see a reel on Instagram or an ad on TV that makes us think we're not doing enough. But Dr. Lowe, if we already have it written down, Mm -hmm. what will make today great, then we have an anchor and we don't need to rely on all the outside distractions of how to um, manage our own expectations. It's like we're we're setting our intention for the day. And I I love journaling. I love it. Um, you write the vision and make it plain for that day. Yes. <laughs> right? For the day. For Every that single day. day. Every single yes. day. I love it. I love it. What else do you have? What are, what are some other things we can do? So other things that we can do. So first, of course, what would make today great? And then I think taking some time to explore where the expectations came from. So sitting with your therapist, um, or your religious leader or your spiritual leader or guide um, or someone who's an expert in the area, looking back to see where did these expectations come from? So I'll say um, for me growing up, my, my mom spent all the money on Christmas gifts, like (laughs) all the money. And then once we played the toys, broke them all up, Christmas was over. Then we were like without basic needs. And I'm like, want that for my family shout out to my mom she's amazing and that still wasn't right right we talk about it all the time and so for my own family i had to realize we're not about to do a whole bunch of gifts and that's okay regardless Mm -hmm. of what outside people say Mm -hmm. we decided as a family my husband and i that we would focus on experiences for our children family time, traditions, uh, letting our hair down, being in pajamas all day, you know, those types of things, regardless of what society or outside people or other family members said about actual gifts. Now, let me say this, nothing wrong with gifts. There's nothing wrong with doing the holidays your way. My point is figure out why you're doing it 
and make sure that it's not tied to some sort of childhood um, traumatic injury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Experiences over things. I mean, yes, I don't know about you, Dr. RJ, but I don't need another thing, but I do need another passport, Sam. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. Wait, Dr. Lowe, they still stamping your passport because they stopped stamping mine. Yes, ma'am. I demand it. <laughs> I need to start demanding. See that that's I need to ask for because I'm like, wait a minute, I, I need to know where I've been. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and then creating your new creating new traditions. Um the the holidays for many people and you know at the time of of this this episode you know um we're moving into the the December November January holiday season but there are other holidays throughout the year and if you feel anxiety or stress whether it's in March or April or sometime in the middle of the year you can go back and listen to this this episode but i think having the, and you mentioned it earlier, having permission to write your own way of doing things, creating your own yes. traditions in spite of what people may say, in spite of them saying, well, you know, you should, or, you know, we should, you know, that creates yes. a lot of anxiety when really all you want to do is sit at home and eat a pop tart and watch Hallmark movies. <laughs> Absolutely. Creating, creating or designing the life that we desire. So permission to design our lives that we desire. And and another thing about the holidays, as I'm thinking about designing life, there is a lot of grief that has to be addressed during the holidays. Now we know grief, there's not a certain cycle. It's up and down and all over the place. It's more like a a zigzag and a spiral Mm -hmm. all combined into one. Mm -hmm. And so the holidays may or may not involve grief, but generally the tradition, the missing the loved one, the grieving what used to be, even if you're not grieving a person, you could be grieving an experience. You could be grieving your former self. You could be grieving not being where you thought you would be this holiday this year. And Mm -hmm. so taking the time to be still And realize that all those things are happening and then be gentle with ourselves, which probably involves Hallmark movie and Pop-Tarts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And fuzzy socks. You have to have fuzzy socks. socks. (laughs) Yes. That's that's the starter package. Yes. Men, you too. You've got to have some fuzzy socks. So absolutely. uh, Considering, uh, you know, the additional stresses during the holiday season, what advice do you have for leaders on supporting their team members' mental health? Um, people are still struggling, you know, from, I don't even know where we are in the, the pandemic, not pandemic, mm-hmm. recession, not recession. As a leader, how can... Um, how can we support our team members and, and how can we create a, a supportive environment during a potentially challenging time? I think as leaders, it's important for us to slow down and listen mm-hmm. and listen to what our teams need because their needs will change from time to time. Q4, we're like trying to close things off and meet these goals. And depending on your industry, it can be a really hectic time. However, slowing down enough, planning to slow down so that you can listen to the needs of your team because they'll all need something different. The listening alone will make them feel heard. It'll make them um, feel seen. And that in itself is healing. Yeah, yeah. Because we all want to be seen, heard, and valued. Yeah. Make that time to hear me, you know, he like, hear me. (laughs) I'm having a rough time. Uh, I don't want to come to the holiday party. Um, Whatever it is hear and understand that and not hold it as a, um, hold it over their head during their review time. Well, you're not a team player because, but Mm -hmm. oh my God, if you only know what I experienced going through that. So I think that is, I think that's an excellent tip for leaders to be, I don't want to say hypervigilant, but 
to just attentive. be aware, to be a- attentive and be aware during this time that you may be all, you know, snowmen and elves and reindeers and somebody else may be going through grief. Um mm-hmm. And it, it may be a challenge for them at the time. So absolutely be um, be aware and listen yes. and listen. So in that same vein, the holidays often bring a, a unique challenge for, for leaders in balancing work responsibilities and personal commitments. You already said, you know, depending on your industry, the end of the year, Q4 could look very different. What strategies can leaders employ to strike a balance and ensure their own well-being without compromising their leadership roles? You know, leaders, they don't want to feel like they're too soft, but it's like, hey, <laughs> you are you are a human being, not a human yes. doing. And so what applies to your team, it also applies to you. So what would you tell that leader that's trying to balance um, balance those those areas? Well, first, I want to give all of your uh, everyone in your community an automatic promotion because now you all have a board of directors. Every single one of you, you get a board of directors, you get a board of directors (laughs) and your board of directors is your calendar. Your calendar. I say be super, super super intentional about making all decisions based upon your calendar, especially during the holiday season when personal commitments may ramp up a little bit. And so what this looks like is starting ahead of time in September, the end of September, go ahead and put all the things on the calendar. So before you say yes to anything else, you can visualize what your band with one, are you available? Two, do you have the bandwidth? And Mm. three, are you going to even feel like it? Because you know you have to cook the collard greens for Thanksgiving. That's what I'm in charge of the collard greens. So it's personal. Yes, yes. (laughs) And so it's going to be a no for anything on that Tuesday or Mm -hmm. Wednesday for me. So planning ahead to see, one, if you have the availability, two, if you have the bandwidth, and three, if you even have the desire or time to do those things. But you have to be organized and start in September. Don't wait until it pops up in your face and then you're frantic and overcommitted. So use your board of directors for all decisions all the time, but especially during the holidays. I love, love, love number three. Is it something you even want to do? You know, yes. a, a lot of times, you know, I, I don't know about you, Dr. RJ, but I grew up, you know, my mom would say, you know, well, we have to go and do this. And it's it's a good thing to do. And and I think, you know, we grow up feeling like we have to do things that we just really don't want to do. Oh, go play with those kids. And it's like, oh, I don't want to play with those kids. Yeah. And so we grow up having relationships with people that it's like, I don't really, I don't want to play with them. <laughs> and Absolutely. so number three is a big one for me. Do I really want to do it? And if I, if I have to think longer than 30 seconds, I probably don't. And I'm not. And right. for those that are listening, I would say, give your, you're not going to, no one is going to die. Give yourself permission to not do those things that you don't have a desire to do because of what are people go because of what someone else may say or how someone else may feel ask you know ask yourself how am i going to feel <laughs> yes yes i love that and and i think about you know your community high performers we like to do things well yeah and so let me tell you how how i psych myself out to say no to almost everything, yes. right? Because I do, I say no to almost everything. And this is true. When we overextend ourselves, then we show up as a lesser version of ourselves and then nobody gets the full you. And mm-hmm. so you're, you're showing up raggedy when you're not raggedy. And then that starts a whole loop of negative self-talk and takes you down a whole road of imposter syndrome and all mm-hmm. the things. And so 
if you only say yes to the things that you really want to do, like I'm excited, I want to jump out of bed and do this thing. Yes. If you only say yes, then you show up as your authentic self. You show up as the best version of yourself and the people around you get what they deserve. If you show up raggedy and if you're overextended and you're saying yes to everything, you don't really want to be there anyway. That's not fair to them. It's not fair. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to them. And in your burnout and anxiety is going to skyrocket. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's going to skyrocket. Mm-hmm. So beyond the holiday season, what long-term strategies can leaders adopt to promote ongoing stress management for themselves and their teams? You know, how can leaders um, cultivate a culture of well-being within their organizations year round? So it's not like they're trying to, oh, we just have to do this for the holidays, but to create a a culture of of well-being, because I think that's that's important. Absolutely. And so so to create a cultural a culture of well-being internally and externally, leaders have to invest, like invest money, (laughs) right? Into (laughs) like Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, not not Bitcoin, no, like cash or, or, you know, wherever you are in the world, invest your currency. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Into well wellness. We invest in a lot of things um, and we forget to invest in those things that are not as tangible because mm-hmm. that's just how we're we're shaped. Mm-hmm. But investing in programs and executive coaches and um, strategists and people who wake up in the morning to do these things so that as a leader, you don't have another thing to think about on your plate or on your to do list. Like delegate that to someone who's really good at it. Right. I mean, that's yeah. just do it. Put it in just, the budget when it's time. It, it's just do it. It's just do put it. Put it in the budget. It, make, put, it, put it. In, it's a line item. You know, it's a line it, item. Investing in your human capital um, is the best investment a leader will ever make. Absolutely, it, it's going to help their their growth, their development. Um, I always say there's a, a thin line between personal development and professional development. They really go together. <laughs> yep. They and definitely go together real they, bad. Yeah. Real bad, real bad. Right. <laughs> and so um, I love that, you know, it, it invest, invest over the long term. When you really think about and value your, the people, the human beings in your organization, um, they will appreciate it. They will find value in it. And and you'll become a workplace where people want to work year round. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dr. RJ, what are you reading that we should be reading? Oh, so I love to read. I do two audio books a month. Yes, uh, <laughs> that Let me go ahead and let me make that clear. Um, two audio books a month. Um, that are like work related. And then I'll read something for fun um, a lot as well. So sometimes three books. Long story short, I do a lot of reading. One of my favorites though, especially this time of year um, is Be Your Future Self Now by Benjamin Hardy. Mm. I love Be Your Future Self Now. It's one that I read yearly around this time because again, it's a reminder. It gives us permission to push ourselves without stressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. It gives us permission to see and speak to and put things in place and to be intentional about our our ideal selves and our our higher selves. I get all excited just thinking about it (laughs) um, because we definitely sometimes need reminders to work towards our higher self and not just where we are right now. Mm-hmm. I love it. I think I'm going to run and get that as soon as we add that to my audio, <laughs> audio yes, book yes, yes. library. And did you say you had another one or was that it? Was that, that, that's the one you want our listeners to, to embrace, be your future that, self. That's it. Hardy. That's it for now. That That's the one I, you know what? I think I'm going to um, text you my long list. So you'll have it for your community. Yes. Um, so you can drop, drop one every now and then for them, for sure. I, I have a long I, list of favorites. 
I love it. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We've been chatting with Dr. Rashana Johnson Verwain. Visit the show notes to see how to connect with Dr. RJ. You will find a link for her book, Executive Burnout, Seven Reasons Why High Performers Crash and Burn Before Reaching Their Full Potential. And while you're there, grab a copy of Results Driven Organizations, The Four Keys to a High Performance Workplace. You'll find both links in the show notes, as well as a special gift to you for being a valued listener. Until next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Be sure to review the show notes for the resources mentioned. And don't forget to grab your free gift available at freegiftfromtanya.com. Until next time.